Hi everyone, Altar Wisdom speaking. Today we are reviewing my latest Max for Life device, how to play the MIDI generator. Let's get on to it. Okay, so I know what you're currently thinking. Uh, yet another autoplay device, I mean, uh, there already is one, pretty powerful, I mean, it's crammed with uh, so many features that I can't even find more to add. And here comes a new one, and so that's a bit weird. Um, but the fact is, with Live 12, um, if you have followed and you have upgraded, uh, you have this new thing when you're on a clip, uh, which allows you to modify uh, in real time, uh, the, the content of the MIDI clips uh, using things like an arpeggiator, uh, glissando, an LFO, and changing things at the, at a time. And so it's really modifying the clip itself uh, without having to record anything or MIDI out or whatever is directly working on the clip. So uh, I thought to myself that it would be pretty convenient if I could uh, somehow bring the uh, features or some of the features of autoplay into this uh, MIDI generator uh, stuff. So uh, let's have a look. So um, I have a basic track foundation. Um, so kick snare, uh, open hat, like not much going on. Oh. It's pretty simple, nothing fancy. Um, what do I have else? I have this white noise, uh, which doesn't do a lot. Uh, let's remove, get, remove that and listen to it uh, in its own. So it's just plain white noise. Then I have one serum instance. Uh, which is uh, serum two. Um, I get this one, which is a squelch. And the final one, which is uh, an FM sound. Of course, uh, I can't play these on their own because they need to, they need to be they need to be grooving a little bit. Uh, so let's start with the uh, white noise, um, and let's see what we can do. So basically, what I have is uh, this uh, one single note. It's pretty simple. It's, it's similar to what you have with autoplay, uh, and then uh, I'm going to select in my in the devices, I'm going to select uh, Autoplay MG, which is the MIDI generator. I'm going to press Auto, so it will apply and work automatically, no matter, I mean, instantly if I change the settings. And as you see instantly, it has generated something, and uh, it has modified, uh, starting from the note I, I, uh, I've set, it has modified it and created a groove out of it. Uh, as you can see as well, some of the notes are silenced, are muted, uh, that's because of the density. If you see that, I mean, that density will actually uh, tell the device to activate, to mute or unmute some of the notes. So all the notes are still there, so the groove is the same, but some of them can be muted, which means that afterward, once you've done it all, you can change that and maybe mute some of the notes or activate some of them. And apart from that, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty similar to what you have in Autoplay, so you have minimum and maximum length. You, you can select up to four different uh, lengths. So with the weight of each of them, the probability somehow of this weight to happen. So here is mainly 16s, then uh, 8 uh, with a force and a force dotted as well. Um, you can set how long compared to the main note uh, you want to have it. So uh, it can go up to 200. It means that it means that opposite to autoplay more or less. You can have overlapping notes. It's interesting, not on the, on this particular sound, but we'll see that if you have different notes and you want to do some legato or glissando, it can be, it can be interesting. Then you have a velocity setting. And as you can see, as, as soon as I touch something, then uh, the, 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 the sequence is changing. Um, but the notes stay the same. Uh, if I change the velocity, I can add some swing. Uh, so I'm going to forward a little bit in time, the uh, delay a in time, the second uh, 16th of each bar. Uh, and I can as well sidechain. Um, it's a bit different to the sidechain of autoplay, because the sidechain in autoplay is a probability that uh, downbeat notes will actually not be triggered at all. On the, MIDI, on the autoplay MIDI generator, it's going to tame the velocity of this note. So if you have a look, let's activate everything. If you have a look at the first notes, of uh, the sequence. Let's zoom in a little bit. 
you, you're going to see that this velocity, which is uh, at 58, if I increase the side chain, that velocity will diminish. And as well, the second one, so the note, the second, the second 16 will as well be touched. Have a look. So you see the first one is tame up to being totally silent. The second one will be slightly silented, but half of the impact of the of, of the side chain on the first one. So it's going to make that kind of, you know, uh, LFO tool, uh, shaper box, side chain uh, um, shape, but directly on the MIDI, on the on the velocity. So it's pretty nice to, to if you if you can set that side, that uh, velocity to volume, for example, in your in your patch, then it's going to work directly. Uh, we can have a listen as we go. That's the good thing, and find this way you can find the groove uh, that we that we want. Uh, let's put, let's set that to play. One important thing is that uh, here I'm playing on the whole sequence, but if I Cancel that, and instead of having one long note, I'm putting four different notes. I can select one of these notes and process only this one. So the rest of the notes are just out of the out out of the, the processing. So the first one is just playing, and then so which means that I can work on one specific bar, one specific sequence, and then. I change to another one if, if I'm happy with what I have. So let's let's say that I'm happy with this one. By the way, just notice that if you click on transform uh, after you've selected, then it's going to somehow trigger a new sequence, which uh, shouldn't be happening. So instead of doing so, uh, what I advise you is select the notes you want to modify, activate the uh, the device, and then just uh, click on somewhere else and select another clip. So everything we've done has been, it will be burned naturally without having to click on anything. So it was just a, maybe that's a bug in live or something in my device. I don't know. Uh, whatever, it's working this way. Um, let's make this the last one. As you can see, uh, this is the seed. So this is the, uh, the source which controls the randomness. So the same note with the same seed, with the same settings will generate exactly the same sequence. So this sequence and this sequence are identical which is normal. So let's change that and shuffle uh, to a new, new, new sequence. You can as well dial something. And that's going to be your, uh, your, your, your sequence with your random uh, words. And uh, once you've done that, just click elsewhere and uh, your whole sequence has been burned. So let's have a listen. Okay, uh, let's switch to this one, and uh, uh, it has already been processed, as you can see. So let's get back to um, remove uh, the transformation. So, uh, of course, uh, if you have several nodes and uh, uh, and you act activate AutoPlay MG on it, then it's gonna use these notes uh, to trigger various uh, pitches. And so, for example, here it's gonna only uh, play C1. Here is going to have half a chance of playing C2 and C1, and then again C1. So if I activate the device, you see that here I'm only having C1, then C1 and C2, and again C1 at the end. So let's have a listen and uh, see what we do have here. Maybe the volume is a bit low. Let's say that I want to generate another sequence. I'm gonna put everything to play, and but I will send. I'm gonna put a little bit of swing, so you see some of the notes moving slightly, and I'm gonna side chain. So you see, the first note is not is not playing anymore. It's still there, but it's with velocity of zero. It doesn't play. Um, so let's listen to that with the rest. Uh, 
and switch to the the, the next one. So this one is a squelch, I remember where? Yeah, that's a squelch, of course. Uh, one note will not trigger anything interesting, so let's uh, process it and listen to it. So I need to increase the velocity. That's a bit too dense. Let's say only one sixty. So I change a bit too much. Finally, let's listen to the last one. Uh, so this one is, a, is an FM sound. Um, pretty simple, plain FM. And uh, let's apply all device. So I'm selecting this note. And uh, let's have a listen. Okay, cool. So now let's play everything together. And there you go. Um, so what do we have? We have this first sequence with two notes. This one with just a single one. So everything is perfectly on time and uh, you still have the possibility of changing the velocities, activating uh, notes and stuff. And uh, this one has as well some notes silence and uh, it's been, it has been a little bit tame. And that's pretty much it. So that's quite simple. Um, one thing which I'm going to do uh, in the coming days, uh, let me know in the comments if it's interesting for you, uh, is use the incoming note's velocity uh, to uh, dial in somehow the probability of a given note. So say that if you have a note with the velocity of 127, then it's going to have like 100% chances uh, as here, you know, but using the velocities, because I don't have space here to, uh, to add more stuff, and using the velocity sounds like a nice possibility uh, to I mean, make uh, emphasize some of the notes compared to others. Uh, it will not impact at all the outcoming, the outgoing velocities because the incoming notes velocities are not used as they are generated from here, but uh, it can be used uh, for this uh, random selection of a of given pitch. Uh, say that you want to do some kind of 303 uh, acid line, then you're going to have mostly the root note and you're going to have quite a lot of uh, the octave above and you want to add sometimes some notes in between like the uh, tenth note over the root note etc and of course you want to have uh, one thing which I actually didn't show is the uh, layering of notes the uh, let's say that I'm, I have this one and this one as well uh, let's just make that modif small modification and let's generate something from there. Uh, press auto, so you see I can just dial some something even smaller. And I'm gonna add some uh, overlapping on the notes. And as you can see, my notes start to come on each other, on the on the other, which means that if somehow in your patch we have some legato, uh, like here, you can have some legato, 
then uh, you will listen, you will have that portamento happening. And so it can be very interesting, especially with acid lines, uh, to dial in uh, what is called the tie option in the acid lines. And uh, okay, so that was it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you, uh, if you think that device can be useful in your workflow. And uh, if you like my devices from General Standpoint and my plugins, then please uh, go to my Gumroad or to Sound Directive or Adrenochrome shop and uh, feel free to grab something. And uh, anyway, uh, hope you enjoy and uh, happy production. See you guys.